Hi, Glenn. I'm a pastor here in Minnesota, and I just wanted to make two quick comments, if I could. One in regarding uh, taxes and churches, and two, I just got your new book, Control. And as I've been reading through it, I thought, boy, this guy kind of wrote a book that I would say is similar to The Harbinger based off of Isaiah, because I've been doing a study in Scripture, and I read Control, and I thought, well, this is straight out of 1 Samuel chapter 13. (laughs) Um, I don't know what you're talking about, Marty. (laughs) <laughs> well, if you're familiar with First Samuel chapter uh-huh. 13, uh, is what happened is, is the, the Philistines came in, and they took away all the swords. Uh-huh. And not mm-hmm. only did they take away all the swords, but they said, we have to control industry and the blacksmiths. So it says in First Samuel 13, 9, and 10 that there was no blacksmiths to be found in the land of Israel. And it would have been great wanted, if we'd known about that before, Shh, wouldn't it? Quiet, Marty's talking. All right, go ahead, okay, Marty. go ahead, Marty. Oh, oh, uh, so you guys are way ahead of me. So never mind on that. <laughs> no, 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 no. no, no. no, no. What, uh, was, what was the other part of that? Uh, well, the other part was is that you know I've been uh, as working as a church plan over the past ten years, and since two thousand and eight, and you can ask anybody that's a, a pastor right now, as you're trying to get land. Uh, to do churches. I've worked with two different municipalities over the past eight You know years. what, Marty? I, hang, hang on just on. a second. I want to talk to you about that because this is really important what he's about to tell you. Coming up next. This. Back to a pastor in Minneapolis um, who we were speaking to right before the break. We have been talking about the three scandals. The AP scandal, the scandal where the uh, Justice Department just seized all and, and monitored all of the phone calls in and out for a month of the Associated Press. So they knew who the reporters were talking to. Um, the second scandal is Benghazi. And the third one is the IRS scandal. And the IRS scandal was where the IRS was targeting not only the Tea Party people, 912 Project, but also people who were teaching the Constitution, believed this is actually would have put you in a bucket to be examined, believed that America could be a better place. And also, this is the important part, religions. If you were a Jewish organization that happened to be religious and you believed that the uh, Holy Land belonged to the Jews because God gave it to them, that puts you into a bucket that you needed to be examined by the uh, IRS. So Marty was talking about, he says, it's, it's, it's not just the IRS. He's been trying to purchase some land as a, um, as a church. Now, this is, I, I haven't heard the story yet, but I think this is very similar to other stories that I have heard from other pastors, that the paperwork and the, the nonsense that is going on for you to be able to expand as a church is beyond your understanding. Marty. Yeah, about 10 years ago, I left the business world to become a church planner, and in about 2008, 2009, with the economic collapse, uh, myself, organizations that I worked with, other church planning friends noticed that it was just getting incredibly hard uh, to meet with uh, local principalities, municipalities, to have this conversation. And in two different cities here in Minnesota, I had conversations with councilmen as, as we talked about. Here was the exact phrase that was used, we already have enough churches in our cities right now. And at that same time, while I'm hearing that, they're putting up more local bars. And so we had a blunt conversation, and and here's the feedback that I've gotten twice. As a church, we can't tax you as much as we can the local bar. So I walk out of those meetings thinking that my local city sees more of a value from the local bar than they do the local church. And I only have value if you can uh, tax me. So uh, you're totally right, The, the paperwork the meetings that you have to do, uh, there are buildings sitting empty, derelict, that uh, myself and others would love to take over, renovate, add value to that area, but they'll say, no, you can't do that because you're a church. Uh, My first um, um, response to you, Marty, is get out of Minnesota. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know what's interesting about that? So you look at Minnesota and you see that, you know, we still elect somebody like Michelle Bachman, and, and I'll just throw this out there. You know, the Billy Graham Association came in in the 1990s, and they did a, a survey before he did one of his last crusades, and they found out that Minnesota had the highest concentration of churches per capita, even more than the Bible Belt. So you see, like, in this liberal, liberal state, 
you still see the, the church making an impact and organizing, and the problem is, is, is really to organize people of faith to come together along some of these values. But I will tell you this, as a pastor, pastors and churches are so scared to talk about anything political. Anything. Can I tell you something, Marty? If you don't yeah. speak out now, you will lose your um, you will lose your ability to speak. You will lose yeah, your ability to speak. Agree. If you know, as a as a pastor, Marty, I thank you for your phone call. As a pastor, let me just speak to pastor. Let me speak to all people of of faith. What have you done with the understanding that you have been given your mantle, if you will, as a person of faith, your priesthood? What have you done with it this week that people who don't have that mantle, don't have that light, don't have that priesthood, what have you done this week that people who don't have that can't do? We're supposed to be set apart. We're supposed to be different. What is it that you have done that others that don't have that can't do? I contend 99.9% .9 of us haven't done anything unique. We haven't done anything different that our person who listened living next door to us, who, you know, might be an atheist or whatever, we haven't done anything different. Uh, go to church. Okay. But has that affected you? What have you done? Because if we aren't doing things that are different, we will lose that mantle, that priesthood, that power. We'll lose it because we're not using it. We have to act pastors, priests, rabbis, what have you done? What have you done? What will you do this week that will set you apart? And, and, and don't talk about, look at it your own way. You pastors, priests, and rabbis, what have you done differently than those pastors, priests, and rabbis that don't have the understanding that you do, that don't see the world in the same way? Have you done something this week that sets you apart? If you haven't, and you can't say at the end of each week, I have lived it to the maximum ability. I have done, and I have let my light shine. I have, I have done as much as I possibly can every week. You should question yourself why. Why do I deserve that light? And the same thing can be said for freedom. If you haven't done something in this week to expand freedom, Think of the people who don't have any. Think of the people who are throwing themselves off of Foxconn buildings. Think of the people in China that would that would kill for an for a, a, a day of your kind of freedom. Think of the people all around the world that can't say the things that you can, can't go online and do the things that you can do. Go research, find the sources, the original sources that you have access to. If we're not using the internet to find things that strengthen us. Instead, we're only using it to play games. We're only using it to uh, post pictures. We're only using it to find pornography. If that's what we're going to use the internet for, we will lose it. Make a commitment to yourself this week to be a man who lives his life determined to be free. Find out what that means to you. What does it mean to live your life as a man determined to be free? I am determined to be free. I am determined that my kids will be free. That charts my course. I know that freedom will not happen if I become violent, if I become angry, if I lose control, if I am going for the short term. There's a lot of short term wins you can do. There's a lot of things you can do today that will make your life easier or better today. And you know what? This administration, because of Benghazi, the IRS, and uh, what's the third one? The AP scandal. The AP scandal. They are living their life determined to be a ever-expanding government and determined to be in charge. A lot of these things were done short term. And so they'll cut corners. They'll do whatever they have to do. If they really believed in it, they would change the Constitution. But they don't. They know they cannot convince you, so they have to do these things under the radar. Don't do them under the radar. Don't take shortcuts. The only way we win is if we're out in the open and we say what we mean and mean what we say and we're good, decent, honorable people. 
and we live our lives that way every second of our life and we get to the end of our day and the end of our week and the end of our life and say I live my life differently because I was free I lived my life differently because God is the center of my life I lived my life differently than those who weren't free that didn't have God I lived my life in a way where I expanded those things and that understanding in myself and also in my country in the world commit to that it only takes 10 percent 10 percent of this pop population if we truly commit to that we would be okay and not only us but our children and more importantly mankind would be better off because we lived that's quite a grandiose statement but it is my goal in life and that's why i like this audience so much because i believe that you have that same silly, stupid belief that it matters, that you matter, that what you do even when no one is watching matters. I like this audience so much because I know at the end of our days, the world will be a better place because we lived and we came together. That's what we should be striving for. I challenge you to do it.